The purpose of today's message is to break off any sort of fear, guilt, or shame associated with tithing, okay? <clears throat> the Lord has been taking me through this journey of understanding tithing. And he is showing me where in many ways that we have been taught wrong and um, what applied in the Old Testament no longer applies now. Um, I, I have always believed in tithing. I've always believed in tithing 10% um, because that is what I was taught. That is what we're taught. That's what we hear about, right? And so we tend to believe until God comes and tells us, hey, you were taught wrong. And, um, you know, here's the real truth of the matter. So I am not going to go into um, the whole history of tithing and exactly what happened. But the Lord does want me to point out that um, it, it was not 10% of your money. It was 10% of your crops and your herds. Um, and, and it was for the purpose of the poor and the Levites and the priests. Um, the Levites did not have any, uh, land of their own. They could not, they, they served in the temple. They served in the temple. So they, they did not have any land of, of their own. They could not, um, grow their own crops. They could not, uh, have the, their own herds. So the Lord provided for them in this way. Okay. It was also for the poor. Um, it, there was a storehouse for the poor. And so, um, it was food. It was food. Okay. He just wants to, um, he wants to make you aware that it was food for those who needed the food. Um, okay. So I have always thought that um, I needed to tithe. There have been times in my life that I have not tithed. Um, uh, I, I do not tithe to um, a church very often. Um, every once in a while, I will tithe to a church. Um, God has directed me, um, directed me to use my tithe toward someone who is in need at this time. And this has been a long, ongoing process of supporting this person in need. Um, and it was directed by the Lord and he told me to use my tithe for it. So, um, I, the only reason why I am explaining this is because there are many teachings and a lot of times it is by pastors who want to continue to get your tithe. Okay. And, um, that, that say you have to tithe to your church. You have to tithe to your church. Um, and it has to be the 10%. And, um, you know, a lot of these pastors, they're not hurting for food. <laughs> and, um, so there is a way you know, there, there, there is a right place of pastors, um, uh, being provided for, um, the word says that we need to provide for our pastors. There is a right place of that. Um, when you, when you see these mega churches, um, on, on TV mostly, and I don't know about the individual churches that you guys are in, but I know because I've seen so many of them on TV, the mega preachers talking about tithes, talking about sowing your seed, talking about, you know, if God, if you give your tithe, God is going to bless you for it. And, and they're out there having their private jets and, um, you know, their fancy cars and the people who they are taking from are poor they are the ones that need it. They are the ones that are in need. You know, if this would have been back in the Old Testament, it, it is those those same people who would be going to the storehouses and and would be 
benefiting from the storehouses and eating the food from the storehouses because they needed it. They're poor. But somehow the message has been changed into, you know, if you don't tithe, God's not going to bless you. And the only way that you're going to get a blessing is if you pour your money into our church. Um, it is witchcraft. It is witchcraft. And when you, when you fall into this mindset of this and you, you allow yourself to be manipulated in this way, you are agreeing with the witchcraft. Okay. Um, so the Lord, who, okay. Lord Jesus, help me get back on track. Um, the Lord says that there, there, there was 613 laws in the old Testament. Okay. Now, um, Galatians five, four says that if you are seeking to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace for in Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision mean anything, but faith working through love. Okay. So there are 613 laws. Circumcision was way up there. Okay. It was way up there. It was considered very important. But when Jesus came, like it, it, the, the, the word says that, that it means nothing now because Jesus changed everything. He changed everything. Um, another example in Mark seven, eight, Jesus was saying that, that whatever goes into your mouth cannot be defiled because it goes into your mouth, um, and not into your heart. It goes into your stomach and is eliminated. Okay. Part of the laws, part of the 16, 613 laws, it had to do with tithing. It had to do with circumcision. It had to do with what you could and could not eat. And Jesus is, himself is saying everything is clean now. Jesus changed everything. Okay. We are not able to follow all these laws. We are not able to follow all, the, all these laws. That's why we needed Jesus. And he changed everything. There are two commandments for us. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. That encompasses all of the law. Okay. That encompasses all of the law. Um, now I'm not saying that we have a free will to go out and sin. We do not have free will to go out and sin. Um, <clears throat> But I am talking about these, these Old Testament laws that were put in place. And, and even, let me just say this, even what the Lord has showed me in, in the Old Testament laws, they, it is not correct what we have been told. What we have been taught, it is not correct um, about tithing. So um, if he wants me to, I, I may eventually do a video about it. I'm still trying to understand it a little bit more and learn exactly um, how tithing worked back then. Um, so I'm still in the process of that. Um, but the Lord told me uh, yesterday, now, now is the time that I want you to make this message and, and, um, break off the fear, break off the guilt and break off, um, the obligation of tithing 10%. Um, okay. So where do you want me to go next? God. <sighs> Um, okay. The Lord, okay. He says, he says, look, um, the Lord says that your pastors and those who work in your church do deserve to be provided for. They do deserve to be paid. Um, so uh, there is scripture to back this up in first Timothy five seventeen, in first Corinthians nine eleven. Um, both talk about pastors deserving to be paid for their hard work. Neither place says 10%. The Lord says, um, when you give, give according to second Corinthians nine, seven which says that you need to decide in your heart what to give, not grudgingly or under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. 
Okay. So he's saying, he's saying we are no longer required to do the 10%. Um, but our pastors should be provided for. So, so decide in your heart what you are willing to give cheerfully, what you are willing to give and not feel bad about it and give that because the Lord loves a true forgiver. And, and in the, that time, he will bless that. He will bless that. He says, look, this is, this is a statement he gave me. He says, I honor your help to the needy more than your 10% that comes from a place of ritualism, fear, and guilt. If you are, are sowing your seeds to get a, a harvest back from God, because that is what you have been told about tithing. Um, and if that's what you're doing, and if you're doing it out of a place of fear, like, wow, I, I didn't give my 10% this month. Oh my goodness, Lord, I am so sorry. Like, um, this is, uh, this is really bad, you know, or, or feeling guilty, um, the Lord wants you free from that. This is fear and guilt are from the enemy. The enemy is putting those things in your heart, maybe through other people, maybe through your own understanding, but the, the, the Lord wants it gone. You are free now, child of God. You are free now from the fear and guilt and ritualism of tithing. You are free in the name of Jesus. The Lord says you are free. You are free. No longer is he requiring 10%. That ended a long, long time ago. And we were never taught right about that to begin with. Um, he says, giving your heart what you can give cheerfully. And, and yes, if you are being fed b by a, a leader, if you are being fed in a way um, it, that, that benefits you spiritually, you should sow back into them. You should sow back into them. You should help them. You know, like you are benefiting from them. They should benefit from you as well. But, but you are not required to give them 10% of your income. This is a lie that I have believed for so long, you know, and I, I was like truth, truth, truth in it because I mean, it's, it's, it is like these pastors sometimes just like hammer it into you. And, and that when they're doing it for their own benefit, that is witchcraft. That is witchcraft. The Lord says a lot of pastors don't understand this either, you know, but there are some who are doing that just for their own benefit so they can get that new car. And they believe they have earned it. They believe that they are worthy of it. Um, <clears throat> It, it is witchcraft. It is witchcraft. Um, okay, so. Um, Proverbs nineteen seventeen says, Whoever is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his good deed. Okay, so. If you're wanting to sow a seed and get, get a, a harvest from it, go help someone who is poor. Because this verse clearly says you are lending to the Lord by doing that. You are not giving to the Lord by doing that. You are lending to the Lord by doing that. And he will repay you for your good deed. It is, it is more beneficial to help the poor than it is to pour your money into mega church pastors or um, pour your money even into your local church out of a sense of guilt and fear and obligation. Today, you are released from your fear and your guilt about tithing your 10%. The Lord says, decide in your heart what you can joyfully give and give that. And whenever you give joyfully and whenever you follow through on what you have decided in your heart to give, he blesses that. He blesses that. 
if you give sparingly, he will best bless sparingly. If you give bountifully, he will be- bless bountifully. But, and, and that's biblical. But, but no longer be held by this stronghold of this lie that we have been taught. Is there anything else you would like me to say right now, Lord? Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm going, I'm, I am still learning more about this. The Lord wanted this to be released today. He has given, like he is, he's, he's telling us if you, I mean, uh, this is amazing how God is working. Okay. He, he, he has been telling us that he is pouring out knowledge and wisdom and understanding about things that we did not know about in the past. Um, he is pouring it out right now. He is pouring it out on his children. He is righting some of the wrongs. And, um, and he has, he has done several, he's given several words um, in regards to this lately on this channel. And it's funny because like even the word that he gave yesterday was about, um, about helping the poor and giving to the needy. And it's like, he is trying to show us something and, and he is building on these things as we go. He is building on these things as we go. And, um, and they all tie in together. He is pouring out this, knowledge and wisdom and understanding from heaven so that we can walk in freedom and we can, we can be released from the lies that we have believed. And, um, and we can, um, you know, his church can have true understanding that may have been stolen by the enemy, um, to keep us in bondage. Jesus says that, you know, he, he sees those of you who are really struggling and, and, um, he, he wants you to be released from this mindset of, I, you know, I can't pay my bill this, this month, but I, I have to pay my 10%. Um, and you know, he wants you to be released from this mindset of that because it's, it's keeping you in bondage in your mind. Um, he says, he says, decide what you can pay and, and pay it out of joyfulness and not out of compulsion. Um, and he says, he says also, just as he has told me that I can use my tithe to help, you know, this person in need, um, you, you can also do it that way too. be led by the Holy spirit, you know, be led by the Holy spirit on, you know, if you, it, Oh, Jesus, help me. Okay. If you, um, Just be led by the Holy Spirit. When you are, when you are wanting to help someone in need, you know, if if the Holy Spirit is telling you to use your tithe for them, do it. Um, okay. I think that's it. We thank you, Lord God, for your freedom. We thank you for bringing in truth. We thank you for um, writing us when we have wrong understandings about things. We thank you for releasing us from our fear and our guilt and our shame. We thank you so much for your faithfulness to us, God. Like, we don't deserve it. We are not worthy of it, but you are worthy, and we praise you for that, God. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy of all of our praise all of our thanksgiving all of our our um all of the glory we just um magnify you god because we could not do any anything without you we love you very much in jesus name amen i love you guys hope you have a wonderful weekend and i will see you next time he has me come on here